Welcome to the next episode of uh, the series of this vid video chat, where we usually dis discuss the, the impact of the pandemic on the shipping industry. Today, we're taking a break from maritime matters, and uh, we move to the skies. So, um, I have with me Michael Robertson, co-founder of uh, Flight Rider 24. Um, welcome, Mike. Thank you for joining you. us today. Welcome. It's been quite some time since we last met in Stockholm, and uh, I'm very happy to see that Flight Rider 24 is uh, is doing great these days. So, um, before we we dive into current affairs, do you mind giving us the Flight Rider 24 pitch for uh, those very few people I'm sure that might not know what you guys are doing? So, Flight Radar 24 is is like uh, more or less the same as marine traffic, but but for aircraft. So, so we are tracking all the aircraft flying around the world from small Cessnas and Pipers to, to big uh, Airbus and, and, and Boeing aircraft. Great, so marine traffic for the skies. Uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's been interesting to see that, you know, uh, the, two, uh, the two companies have, uh, have had parallel uh, lives for the past uh, 10, 12 years. Um, all right, so um, about this uh, pandemic situation, um, we see that we understand that there's a, an unprecedented drop in air traffic uh, lately. What have you seen? What's, the, what's been the impact? Yeah, so, so we started to see some, sometime between January and February that the air traffic started to, to drop. Uh, and uh, in, Mar <clears throat> Sorry, in March, there was a very big drop. So at the end of March, the, the global air traffic has gone down by about 80%. Uh, and uh, beginning of April, we started to, to see a small increase. And, and that trend has, uh, has yeah, kept going up since that. So from being down 80%, it's down by about 75% today. So, so yeah, a small increase from the bottom, but, but still a very, very big degrees for, from normal levels. Yeah, that, that's, that's huge. And uh, yeah, I know that you have all these detailed analysis and uh, cool visuals uh, that you've been posting on your blog and social media. So yeah, uh, to, the, to the audience, I, I suggest you go and take a look. They're really eye-opening. Um, so Michael, have you, have you tried to, you've sliced and diced all this data, I know. So have you seen any specific patterns uh, in which planes have been grounding, grounding first and uh, where have you seen the, uh, the uptake now? Yes, so, so just like COVID-19, it affected China first. Uh, there was an 80% drop in China. Uh, and... Uh, Afterwards came Europe uh, and, and other parts of the world, except for America. Uh, and then China started to increase before US started to drop. Uh, and today, if we break down by, by region, uh, China has actually gone up quite a lot. So today, from the top levels, China is down just 50%. So they were down 80% just like the rest of the world, and now they are just down 50%. So, so they have more or less doubled the traffic from the bottom. Uh, and we are now seeing that trend in, in Europe uh, it, it, that is starting to go up in the Middle East. Uh, India will open in, in the next days. So, so yeah, what happened in China will, will happen in Europe, in the, in the Middle East, in the, in the next days and weeks, and the U.S. is, is at the end. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. So would you say that you know, this, this data could be also used as a lead indicator for uh, economic recovery? I mean, have, been, have people been using uh, your data for that? Yeah, we, we have been sharing our data with many big analyst companies that are doing analysis on, on this. And, and we think this is a very good indicator, uh, tracking how many flights there are per day. Okay. So uh, we're going to be having a heads up from you when we, you know, before the 
tourism uh, season starts in Greece then, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> all right, that, that's great. So 80% drop, that's huge. Uh, but I understand, you know, you've been through similar situations in the past, right? Like 10 years yes. ago. Yeah, so, so more, more or less exactly 10 years ago, we, in April 2010, uh, we had the uh, ash, ash cloud from, from Iceland. Uh, and back then, uh, the traffic in Europe at least went down by more or less 100%. There were like four or five days uh, without traffic over Europe. Uh, but then the ash cloud disappeared and, and, and the traffic came back in like two, three days. So, so for four to five days, we had a similar situation with, with a lot of traffic gone, but, but then everything was back to normal. Uh, and this time we don't really expect it to take one to two days to, to come back. This time it will take maybe one to two years before it's, it's back to normal levels. Yeah, this is uh, what we, everybody sees as well. Uh, but how does it feel to, uh, to see your, uh, your map being empty of, uh, of planes? No, it, it doesn't feel good. Uh, and, and, with all the aircraft gone, it's it's affecting airlines very badly. Lots of people are are losing their jobs. The the, the tourism is, is affected. I, I I know a lot of hotels have to be close, and uh, that makes uh, lots of people lo lose their jobs. So so yeah, I guess like for for every aircraft that disappears, it means that that a couple of people lost a job. So, so yeah, it's 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 not a nice view, I think. Yeah, let let's hope it's uh, temporary. Yeah. Uh, do you actually believe it's going to be temporary, or do you see a long-term change in the aviation industry? Um, yeah, very hard to say. Uh, I don't know so so much about COVID nineteen, but but. It looks like, uh, at least from what I read in the media, that that we should ha have some medicine in, in the next year. So, so I hope next year, 2021, we should be able to, to travel normally again and, and, and the traffic numbers are, are similar to what we used to have and, and that some airlines will, will survive. So, so it's still possible to, to, to go to, for a vacation or, or to meet the family living in, in other countries. Yeah, well, we all hope so. Uh, but I'm mostly asking about, you know, we hear about the, these stories about the large planes uh, being uh, retired early and, you know, the A380 is uh, being you know, out of service now. And so yeah. what's the story there? I mean, is it the end of the large planes? So, uh, I, I, yeah, good, very good question. So, so I, I think A380 will have some big problems. Uh, Maybe not because it's so big. I think the big problem is that it has four engines and every engine consumes a lot of fuel. So, so the A380 is, is quite fuel consuming and uh, so, so it makes quite uh, expensive to operate. And now when airlines have really bad economy, they, they really need to, to cut down on, on what the costs are and, and, and the A380 is, is very expensive to operate. So, so we still will still see some A380s flying, but I think like 200, 250 have been built, and, and maybe 50 will survive this. I don't know. Uh, and then then we have the the old 747 uh, that's been around for 40 or 50 50 years. Uh, very iconic uh, aircraft, um, and that aircraft is also consuming a lot of fuels. So it will probably not survive as passenger aircraft, but uh, it's possible to convert it to, to fly cargo. Uh, and, and today there's a very big demand for, for cargo. So, so the 747 will probably survive, but, but mostly as, as a cargo aircraft. Um, yeah, I, I expect the passenger demand to, to, to drop for, for at least one, two years. So uh, yeah, I think there will be a shift from passenger to, to, to cargo. Okay, that, that's that's interesting. Uh, who's winning this game? Is it Airbus or Boeing then? 
I, I don't think we have any winners here. And, uh, it, it's it's a catastrophe for, for, for everyone. I'd hear that. Uh, well, I'm sure they'll, they'll, they'll find some way to pivot around and yeah. moving to smaller and more agile aircraft, right? Um, going back to your, uh, your website and the, the empty map that we were talking about earlier, have you, what, what have you uh, seen around you know, the users' behavior and uh, visitors on the web and on the mobile app? Are they more interested in an empty map or a, a full one at the end of the day? Um, I, I think most people uh, like uh, when there are more aircraft on the map, uh, but uh, when there are less aircraft, I, I think that people have uh, noticed new patterns, new aircraft that they didn't seen before. Uh, so normally, most of the aircraft that, that we track are, are passenger aircraft, airlines flying between Europe and US, within Europe to, to China, Japan, and, and so on. And, and we, with this aircraft gone, uh, what remains is like helicopters, uh, private jet flights, uh, cargo flights. So, so people started to realize that there's other traffic as well. Just an example, uh, over North, uh, North Sea, we have quite a lot of helicopter traffic because there are oil rigs uh, pumping up oil. Uh, and these helicopters have been flying in and out to these oil rigs daily for, for the last, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, and we started to get a lot of questions about these helicopters. What's going on? Is there an accident? Is, is, is this training? Or, or why are they flying over the North Sea? And um, we say, yeah, they've always been flying there. It's just that they haven't been visible because of all the air tra airplane traffic. And now with the airplane traffic gone, you suddenly see that there are helicopters below. Uh, and also we had a very, very big interest for, for the Antonov 225, which is the biggest aircraft in the world with, with just one built. Uh, and it can take about uh, 200 tons of cargo. So this, this aircraft has been flying uh, back and forth between Europe and, and China, bringing medical equipment. Uh, so quite a lot of users are, are tracking this aircraft, which actually right now is, is in Athens, in, in, in Greece. Uh, landed yesterday with, with medical equipment from, from China. Okay, so at least we have one plane in, uh, uh, in the Athens airport, because I, I believe it's generally <laughs> closed down. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Anything else uh, that you've seen? Any interesting patterns? Uh, uh, so, so we have seen like many people are interested in sports uh, and, and uh, they want to start playing football again. Uh, and some football players are either been like on vacation or they are changing teams. So, so many people are, are trying to look uh, when they are going back to, to their, their teams. And we had, for, for example, Ronaldo flying from uh, Madeira to, to Italy like one week ago. So, so a lot of users were tracking that flight. Uh, and we have some other football stars flying and, and many, many people are, are watching these flights. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. I, I never thought that you, know, you would track uh, <laughs> football players through their planes, but uh, I can see it. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, so um, I understand uh, at that you know, the impact uh, of the pandemic has been huge for the aviation industry, but thankfully not so uh, not so big for the flight riders and for right business wise things going as usual. It's it's very similar to, to business as, as usual. Um, so we initially thought that that when eighty percent of of the traffic disappears, we will lose eighty percent of our visitors. But actually, the visitors number initially went up quite a lot. Uh, and uh, I think it was up by 50, 60% in the beginning. Uh, now, some of the new users have disappeared. So, so we are back on more or less normal levels. Uh, so, so it's been very interesting experience to see that although the traffic is gone, people still want to, to track flights. and. Uh, many new users who maybe are looking for, I don't know, 
they are tired of watching Netflix all the time and they want some other type of ent entertainment or maybe they, they are watching for, uh, I know there have been a very big demand for medical equipment, so there have been a lot of talk in, in media about uh, equipment coming in from China, so I think some users have been interested to see are there any flights coming from China, is, is this aircraft coming that they wrote in media, it's arriving today. Uh, so yeah, it's been a very interesting experience, uh, but for, for now, at least for us, the, the, the traffic is, is, is okay. Well, uh, at least this sounds like uh, some good, good news, and uh, I do really hope that uh, we, we see a recovery very soon, because I uh, understand the impact has been great for, the, for aviation. Um, Michael, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us. Yeah, it's thank been you. a very, very interesting chat. And uh, yeah. we'll see you again soon, hopefully yeah, in, in person. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah.